and I have with me again Cody, Cody Hustman, and what are we going to look at today? So today uh, we're going to talk about something that I'm very excited um, to to get GA here with uh, Pure, and that's uh, VMware Virtual Volumes. The legendary virtual volumes that we've yes. been waiting so many years. Mysterious and see. elusive virtual volumes. All right. And I believe you're going to show us real live virtual volumes and we're going to be able to explore and, and have a poke around. Yeah, that's that's absolutely the plan here. So let's, let's go ahead and do it. All right. Great. So um, as a little bit of a preface, right, if you're not familiar with it, virtual volumes is VM granular storage, right, via storage policy, right? Provisioning your own storage granular down to the virtual disk on the array. So a virtual disk is a volume, but you can do it also via policy, right? So I want it to be replicated once an hour or every 10 minutes. Those volumes will be configured as needed, right? And that's conceptually what it is. So let's take a look at what it actually looks like inside of vSphere um, and, of course, on the flash array. So first thing we want to do here is uh, let's take a look at the storage policies. So the first thing you want to do is create a storage policy. So inside of my vCenter, you have this policies and profiles section where you can create a variety of different things. And there's your customization specs and host profiles. There's also this. VM storage policies. Inside of here, you can create different policies based on whatever BOSS providers you have registered. Right? And if you're not familiar with BOSS, it's the VMware API for storage awareness. It's basically a provider that the storage vendor creates to say, hey, this is what my array can do. Right? I can replicate, I can snapshot, I can dedo, you know, whatever you want. So when we register our Flash Array BOSS provider, we can create policies based on it. And I have a whole bunch of them already created, but we'll take a look at what, what this actually looks like. If we go into our rule sets here, we'll see that we have my pure storage provider, and we have a variety of basic rules, right? So something like, yeah, I want it to always be on a flash room. And we also have a replication component to this, right? And this is what VASA 3, vSphere 6.5, introduced, is the ability to do built-in replication policies of virtual volumes, right? Which is very important, right? Mm -hmm. Replication. So we have a variety of things here, and some of them are based on replication, some of them are based on snapshots, right? So I want to replicate my VMs once, a, once every five minutes. So I want to snapshot them once every 24 hours. So if we did, a, say, a local snapshot interval of, say, um, one hour, I can go then and see, hey, do I actually have any storage that's compatible with this? Right? And I do. Right? I have one VVOL data store um, that's compatible with my storage policy. Right, great. So I can provision with that policy, and I can actually have it configured as such. Mm -hmm. Right, but that really begs the question: What's a VVOL data store? I thought you said there's no, there's no data, stores. data stores, right? It's like, well, it's, it's true. There's no physical data store. There's no VMFS data store. There's no VMFS data stores. Exactly, because you got to provision from something, right? And and yes, VMware could have done it differently. They could have removed the data store and said, oh yeah, this is the array, but. One of the things that VMware did, and I think was really smart, is that they really strive to not change the look and feel and user experience of vSphere mm. um, from VMFS to vVols, right? You still have a data store, but it's not a physical one or whatever, right? It's an abstraction. It's, just, it's an entry point to the underlying storage exactly. rather than being the entirety of the underlying storage. Exactly, exactly. It's just a representation saying, hey, yeah, I have some storage and I can do this. So. I have a storage container that's um, that's presented. As you just mount, right? You go to your cluster and say, "Add storage, mount VVOL data store," right? And you choose your data store. And, and all this is is an amount of capacity, and you can choose that capacity, right? Of you, what you want the, these users to be able to provision from. And the capabilities that are exposed through VESA are tied to this data store. Exactly. So when you register your VOS provider, that array will say, "All arrays of my type. These are the possible things that we can do." Right? The storage container will say. These are things that the array that I represent actually can do right now, right? And so what that looks like is really up to your array provider, up to your configuration of the underlying array, right? So there's yeah. a lot of possibilities. So let's actually provision a virtual machine, right? That's the whole point here. So I have a, a Windows template here. Um, um, and we can uh, deploy a virtual machine from this template. Nothing very exciting. It's just a uh, Windows 2012 R2. You know, and we'll call it a uh, Windows VVOL. So I'll um, choose my cluster. And now the next step here is I could just choose a data store, and that's fine. Um, but let's choose a policy to help us sort through my many, many data stores I have. So we'll just do snap one hour. So I only have one VVOL data store that's compatible with it. Right? All my other ones are VMFS, so they, they can't do that. And furthermore, since that policy has a replication or snapshot 
component to it, mm -hmm. I have to choose a replication group, right? And a replication group is once again kind of up to your vendor, right? And us, it's a consistent consistency group, right? right? That matches the policy that you want to add this virtual machine or the individual virtualness to. And so we'll hit uh, hit next. And before we finish this, let's take a quick look at the array. So this is my array GUI. And we'll look at our volumes here. So we have a couple objects here. And the first thing here you want to note is we have what they call volume groups. When you create a new VM on array, it's going to create a volume group. That's what represents the virtual machine. And since it's an object that anybody can use, right? If you don't use VVOLs, you can create your own volume group, add your VMs to it or, or your volumes to it or whatnot. But since it's a built-in object that's generic, any feature that we add will then automatically work with volume groups and then in turn work with VMs, with, right? With yeah, VVOLs with hosted VVOLs VMs. With and VMs, exactly, yeah. right? Uh, and so when you create that, that's what it's actually going to, it's going to do. If we look at one of these volume groups, we see that it has a couple different volumes in it. So the config VVOL, configuration yeah. information, right? And then for every virtual disk you have is a data VVOL, right? Size to the, whatever allocation you decided for that, for that virtual volume. When you power on that VM, swap, swap VVOL. VVOL. Right? When you power it off, deletes it. So, pretty cool. So let's, let's actually finish the wizard. Go ahead and create that. Okay. Let's create that VM. All right, so first thing it's going to do is going to create that volume group, and it's going to create the volumes, uh, and then it's going to copy the data from that template. Mm -hmm. If that template's on the same array, X copy. It's already right? deduped. Yep, and it's already deduped and all that kind it's of stuff. So very change. fast, yeah. right? Um, and it's going to leverage the offloading process. If it's on a different array, it'll standard read writes. Yeah. So let's go back to my array and see how this looks. <clears throat> so if I go back to my volumes, we'll see that I've created a new volume group. Here's my Windows VVOL. And here's my config VVOL and my data VVOL, right? Just one data VVOL um, added into this VM right this. now. Yeah. Right. So let's, um, let's go ahead and power it on. So we'll choose my VM here. We'll go ahead and power it on. And that's going to create that swap VVOL. And so um, a tab you see right now we have added in our vSphere Web Client plugin is a, well, our Flash Array virtual volume objects, right? And so this tells us some basic information about our VM, right? Um, what virtual disks do I have are actually virtual volumes, and what underlying volume represents that that virtual disk? Um, so let's let's uh, let's add a new virtual disk to this VM, and let's do some some management around that. So we'll go and edit settings, and we'll choose a new hard disk, and we'll just use default, right? So the forty gig thing that it automatically adds for Windows. Yeah. We'll go ahead and hit OK. Glad to add a new volume. If we go back to our volume group here and click on my Windows yeah. VVOL, mm -hmm. here's my 40 gig. Wonderful. And of course, the swap VVOL that was new. Yeah, and the swap, the swap there volume. too. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So let's um, let's make a mistake. Let's go ahead and accidentally delete that uh, virtual disk. So I'll go edit settings. And uh, let's say I originally wanted to just, you know, remove it and add it to another VM, but I mindlessly deleted it. And then hit OK a million times. So in this case, well, uh, if it was VMFS, I'd have to well, go to my backup. I'd have to go to a snapshot if I have one and yeah. pull it out, re-signature, all that kind of stuff, right? But one of the things on the flash array, when you delete pretty much any object type, what we actually do is put it in our destroyed volumes folder for 24 hours, mm -hmm. right? So there's a little bit of a... We got you a yeah, safety net. Exactly, a safety net. <clears throat> and so we could manually recover that. But once again, one of the things that we have in our vSphere plugin is restore deleted virtual volume. Right? Nice. Um, so this will basically say, hey, do I have any volumes on the flash array that belong to the VVOL ID of this VM? I do. I can go ahead and restore it and add it right back. Right. Uh, and this really simplifies the whole process right, of, of restoring that virtual disk into um, my VM, I don't have to do that resignaturing, right? And I mean, this is something that you can do yourself. Like there's a um, VMware SDK call um, for import unmanaged snapshot. It's not right. necessarily a snapshot, it can be a VVOL, but you can use that for power CLI, um, okay. whatever to, to import things in. And right, and, and because of this flexibility, uh, we have other features inside of it that we can then take from other VMs, right? If I want a, uh, a virtual disk or another VVOL, right, and add it to that VM, I can do that right here in the plugin, right? I can overwrite it. So this really makes, snapshot management, moving things around, very simple, because they're just flat out volumes, right? I can just connect it right up. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do with, with the plugin and with that concept of, of, uh, of direct volumes on the array. And a really cool thing about 
and VVOLs that I don't think is talked about enough. Um, actually, my V Brown bag session at VMworld is going to be on the subject. Mm-hmm. Is that um, the data path of VVOLs is just that's T10 standards, right? There's nothing mm-hmm. proprietary really about that, right? It's all T10 standards, and there's no proprietary file system on VVOLs, right? It's whatever the guest puts on. It, it's right? it's essentially a one way of thinking is it's dedicated LUN for yep. each of those VVOLs. That's what's under the covers. Exactly. And the guest OS does all its formatting on it. Exactly. And so, it, but the benefit over like an RDM, right, yeah. is that it goes through the virtual SCSI stack of ESX. So you can do storage emotion. You can do cloning, right? You can do storage IO, all you, kinds you, of cool You can stuff, do right? grows, which is a nightmare for a world of ice map. Exactly. There's a lot of cool stuff. But because they're also just full volumes, um, you can then take a volume that's a VVOL to a VM, present it at the same time to a physical server, right? On the same right, running, right? Sharing it. Or, or clone it and present to clone a physical it. machine somewhere else. Or, Ex- yeah. Exactly. We have two of our beta customers right now uh, for VVOLs testing. They have physical Oracle servers. Mm-hmm. They snapshot um, that database, and then they're adding in it as a VVOL to your VMs or dev tests, right? Nice. Because there's no resignaturing. There's really the only difference between a VVOL and a volume um, is how it's addressed by the host. A VVOL is a sub one, a volume. Mm-hmm is a standalone standalone one, one right? 2.5 or whatever, right? Yeah. And so there's some really cool flexibility around that. So I'm really excited uh, to see uh, what customers kind of do with this and what, what use cases they come up with um, around the VVOL kind of portability and, of course, um, the storage policy-based management. The last thing I want to quickly show uh, in the demo is, of course, that storage policy-based management. We, we, you know, showed it, but we didn't really kind of get into it. So let's let's take a look here at my my protection group that I added to. A protection group like I mentioned before is a consistency group. So in here, I have my volumes that have been added, and this is my schedule for that protection group. So one hour snapshot, right? no replication for these. So let's take a look quickly here at um, our storage policies, and this is this is one of the major benefits. It's VVOLS is not just about day zero; it's about day two, right? Because today, if I have a VM on a data store, I'm like, oh, I went on that data store because that data store is replicated. What if someone goes to the array and... Turns off replication. Or or adds another VM that's part of the same application and doesn't put it on a replicated data store. Exactly. So you basically, you need additional software to manage it. You need good change control. But let's say if someone even violates that change control, how do you know, right? So if we choose my actual policy that I've added that um, uh, VM to... Oops. Yeah, I actually find the right policy. I have so many policies here. Like, sure, I'm going to click on the right one, drag it over. One of these two. I have two names, same thing. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So it's compliant, right? It's configured right. Nothing's been changed wrong. But let's say some sneaky admin goes into my array and says, oh, this is ridiculous. How dare you snapshot it once an hour? It's two hours. Now, VMware has the ability to check compliance, right? So and I can, I'll just kick it off, uh, compliance check off manually. And now my VM is marked as not compliant, right? right? So I can then go re- reprovision it. I can go, oh, I know the problem. I'll go fix it. If I rerun it to the provisioning wizards, all right, here are your options now, now that it's been changed. So there's a lot, of, a lot of cool benefits around day two management of your VMs mm-hmm. just besides provisioning and creating, right? Uh, and the last thing, of course, is snapshotting, right? Now when you take a VMware snapshot of a VM, it's an array-based snapshot, right? So you don't have that copy on right or yeah. redirect on redirect right, rather, right. Um, yeah. performance penalties. I could talk for hours about the benefits of Evolve, so I'm very excited to kind of get this out <laughs> here with the flash array. Nice, excellent. And that's all GA with um, which versions of Purity? So this will be included in our 5.0 release of Purity coming out okay. later this year. Excellent. Great. Well, thanks very much, Kurt. Thank you. For sure. And thanks for joining us. And uh, keep watching for some more VBrownBag build day at Pure Storage videos.